Oh, she's lovely, Steve. What's she called? Hey, back off, you hairy face hound dog. Steve, get that dog out of the yard now. <laughs> Check your bed, self. Kev Ashford back in the saddle for another van cam on the United stand. Uh, I just wanted to say very quickly, last week's video uh, was deemed quite successful. I, do you know what? It was, it was lovely to go back down memory lane. A lot of people in the comment section, 99% showed it. A hell of a lot of love. A lot of people were saying, oh my God, you know, this is a trip down memory lane. Van Cam is back and that. So I just wanted to say, I appreciate the comments and that. I did have a look. And the other 1%, there was a comment in there that said, this guy is a tool. And I told you last week, and I've got Zlatan and Brian Robson lined up if you want some. Do you know what I mean? Why? Anyway, we will get into it. There's plenty to discuss. There always is when it comes to Manchester United. Now, since the last Van Cam that I did last week, Manchester United went to Craven Cottage. And much like this season, papering over the cracks. You know what I mean? You look at the wall, there's a massive crack in the wall. Just put some wallpaper over it. Be fine. Be fine. Do you know what I mean? House is falling down, literally. You know, like Old Trafford is. But, you know, you need to look at it structurally, address the situation. And uh, uh, the, it's great winning a game in them circumstances. You know, love the fact we left it late. Would have been nice to, uh, you know, control the game early on. And we did get an early goal in that game. We were robbed. At the end of the day, you look at it in isolation and look. And I have to think, you know, I mean, a mate of mine messaged me at half time. And he said, if, if Harry Maguire had a normal sized head, that goal would have stood, you know, because his head was offside. And that's what we're talking about now with VAR. But we take the three points from Fulham and then obviously midweek, we go into the Copenhagen game. And every single game at this moment in time seems to be labelled as must win. You know, Manchester United must win. Copenhagen won. What the hell? What the hell happened? Hey, what's going on? And what a roller coaster of emotions that night in Copenhagen. Uh, the, again, I go back to VAR, the red card for Marcus Rashford. Uh, really, really harsh. Some United fans are telling me, Kev, you know, Rashford has uh, contributed to this himself. He he knew what he was doing. I, I, he's trying to plant his foot. He's trying to plant his foot on the floor. That's what he's trying to do, Sunshine. He's trying to plant his foot, get in front of the defender. Uh, it's clumsy more than anything. You know, Rashford isn't even looking at the player. So it's not like he's gone to do him. You know, you know, I've played, you know, I've played the game. I've played for the Fiddler's Green man uh, in the South Manchester Publicity League. You know, we had some fearsome games against the likes of like O'Shea's of Didsbury and that. And there was tackles flying in and stuff, but... No, I'm not, I'm not having it as a red card. You know when somebody is setting out to do someone. You give them the eyes first. You know, Roy Keane on Alfie Inga Haaland. You know, no intention to get the ball. And, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm doing him. He's getting done, this lad. Really, it changes the game. They say goals change games. I tell you what else does. Shitty VAR decisions. VAR. Very annoying, really. That's what it should stand for. Just popped in the head. My gift to you. Copenhagen, we really needed to win this game. Even to get a point out of it, a, a certain situation, you're looking and thinking, right, you know, it's still in our hands. We've still got two games, two very tough games on paper. But that's, do you know what I've seen? I said on last week's Van Cam, it's all about performance. And the mental, mental thing is, as a performance, it's the best I've seen of the season. And I've had a few people hit me back on the United stand. You know, what's Kev been drinking? You know, best performance of the season. We got beat 4-3. Forget the scoreline. Look at the fact that Manchester United played the majority of the game with 10 men and patterns of play. I thought we were well in control. At 2-0 up, we could have gone 3-0 up. Hoyland in sensational form that evening. You know, he just looked a threat every time. They, they could not cope with him. Uh, Hoyland, obviously, again, is another, uh, what would you say, it, it, you know, it, something positive to take from what has been a quite treacherous time 
especially if you're a Manchester United fan, we're, we're all in the same boat, aren't we? We're, we're all together. I think the majority of the fans as well are with Eric Ten Hag. But, I mean, the big conundrum, what a word. What a word to rip out, you know, this time on a Saturday. Uh, yeah, conundrum. The big conundrum. Stop saying that now. Conundrum for Eric Ten Hag. It's this midfield area. You know, we, we have got the injury to Casimiro, which is, is huge. It really is. And people people will say, Casimiro, his legs have gone. You know, he can't, he just can't do it anymore. Real Madrid have sold us a dud. And when he's fit, Casimiro, and he's on it, he controls games. We've seen that last season. It was pivotal to a lot of good things that Manchester United did and the success that we had last season. So, I don't subscribe to that theory. I'd prefer to have a fully fit Casimiro back. Uh, I would have preferred to have a fully fit Casimiro in the midfield. You know what I mean? On, on what was it? Midweek, we'll say. Copenhagen. You know, going down to 10 men, you, you've got a, a Casimiro in the middle to control the game, maybe. But defensive mistakes, that's what really getting on my tits man and Diego Dallo needs to learn how to oh, how to defend that back post you're giving me oh, you're giving me Trent Alexander vibes you know what I mean and Jurgen Klopp quickly discovered that Trent couldn't defend that's why he's pushed him further up the pitch but it's not the first time is it Dallo caught sleeping on the back post it's something they really need to work on you know if it wasn't long ago it's still fresh in the memory Galatasaray at Old Trafford Wilfred Zaha just mus not even muscling him off the ball, man. It, it was pathetic, that goal that Zaha scored at Old Trafford. And Dallo contributed to that. It's basic stuff, man. Basic, basic defending. Uh, it really, really needs to work on that part of his game. It's, it's something, I suppose, for the, the coaches and Eric Ten Hag to do. It's not my job. It's not my bloody job. My job sitting in a van and talking to you lot. And I, I do, I do enjoy it. The midfield area, though, I'll go back to that word, conundrum. Probably just set a new world record for saying the word conundrum. Uh, I've said it again. But yes, it's Eric Ten Hag needs to look at this midfield. And we've, we've spent huge money. I, I don't care what you say. Some people might say 50 odd million. It's not a lot in today's transfer market. But Mason Mount... He's a player, supposedly, that Eric Ten Hag wanted at United. Now, he has said in his press conference, Eric Ten Hag, that uh, the injury setback that Mount had means that he has to work, and he has to work to get back into the team. So, I, I can see that. It makes total, total sense. You don't want to rush somebody back. But at the same time, coming up today, Manchester United play Luton at Old Trafford. And what a great opportunity for Mason Mount, if you want to get him in that midfield. Because at the mo this moment in time, Eriksen... Absolutely love Ericsson, the resurrection. What a quality, quality player. But you have to look and you think, this guy, you've got about half an hour in him. So against uh, Luton, it's all about uh, in-game management and managing the game. You need to look at it and think, well, all right, can we freshen it up? Now, for me, Amrabat would start against Luton. I think you need him in there, that commanding thing. He looks like the rock or something. You know, when you're watching a match on telly, he's just built like a brick shit house. He looks like the rock and he's just running around. He looks bigger and stronger than everybody else. That, like that kid at school, and he was just better than everyone else just because he was stronger. He was, have one of them. Bit of Fellaini elbows and everything. Get out of the way. Uh, Amrabat in his defence has, has played left back for Manchester United, not his position. I want to see him now start to get a run in his preferred position. Now I think he offers protection to the defence so we can play him in front of whoever's going to start whether it be Varane or Maguire uh, it remains to be seen whether Johnny Evans will be fully fit for this one. But it's about getting the blend right in the middle. And I think he needs to take Ericsson, I'm not going to say out the firing line, but just for his own, you know, for for, the, for Ericsson himself as well. Because he's blowing, man. After half an hour of a match, you know, it's like, all right. So let, let's reverse that then. You know, let's try and get ourselves into a position where we're winning against Luton. Fingers crossed, hopefully. Uh, and then we can introduce Ericsson. And Ericsson's a type of player that can come on, dictate the style of play, slow it down, speed it, just do whatever he wants. He can sit deep, spray passes. Well, Mason Mount will be a huge talking point. Can he get into that midfield with Amrabat? I wouldn't be against that. 
Bruno obviously will be in there as a free. Obviously, Bruno a bit for, uh, further forward. And I would stick with Rashford on the right hand side. Obviously, he was sent off midweek. Uh, morale's going to be low. Uh, and I'd, I think Garnacho has, has done himself uh, a, a huge favour having a great game. So, and Hoyland obviously picks himself. So, hopefully, Hoyland can get register his first Premier League goal of the season. Uh, if you like the jumper, the hoodie, oh yeah, you can get one on the United Stand website. And it's an action-packed day coming up for you. It always is. Straight after the old Van Cam, we will have coming up. We've got uh, the countdown to kickoff thing, isn't it? You know, the, the, where, where we talk tactics and what, and the team news will drop. Uh, and then it goes, obviously, into Mr. Goldbridge himself on his watch along, the world famous watch along. And we will then follow it up with the fan forum, which I will be on. So uh, keep it clean. Don't be mean in the comment section. You know what I'm saying. And for Man United against Luton, and if we can't win this one, we might as well just give up. But anyway, come on, United! Woo!